What is Taylor's theory of scientific management about? F.W. Taylor from the USA is one of the founding figures of management theory. When Taylor first became well known in the early 20th century, manufacturing was very different from today. The owners of a business, by and large, confined themselves to telling their staff what to make and how much to make, and not really how to make it. Craftsmen played a much greater role in manufacturing. These craftsmen largely decided for themselves what tools they would use and in what sequence tasks would be performed. Taylor saw that this was wasteful. He argued that a business should have a clear idea of what a production worker might reasonably be, ex be expected to do. Crucial to this was a careful standard or measurement of work. Taylor developed what came to be known as time and motion studies. Workers were watched and timed doing their jobs. Operational processes could then be redesigned by management using this data. Workers were expected to work to much more closely defined standards. Using scientific management, more efficient and cost-effective methods of production can gradually be put in place. This will lead to increased labour productivity and lower labour costs. Taylor made three assumptions about management. Firstly, that decision making was purely a management role. Workers are just required to provide their physical labour. Secondly, workers were only viewed as machines with certain powers and capabilities. It was up to managers to identify ways of finding the best use of labour. Thirdly, Taylor assumed that money was the primary motivation for employees. What was Taylor's influence? The ideas of Taylor about scientific management influenced some of the great entrepreneurs of the early 20th century, including carmaker Henry Ford, who was one of the first manufacturers to develop an assembly line. In an assembly line, the production process is broken down into its constituent tasks. Different workers are each given one task to perform. Products are carried by a me mechanical belt down a line of assembly workers who perform the same task over and over again. This is an example of what is called division of labour. These production workers, unlike those of earlier generations, need fewer skills. But because of the repetition involved, they can work quickly. Before assembly lines, manufacturing typically involved skilled workers moving through various stages to make a product from beginning to end. The invention of the assembly line, however, enabled the mass production of consumer goods at low prices. Division of labour can bring down unit costs. But is there much connection between scientific management and motivated workers? Assembly line work can be very monotonous and boring. Taylor seems to have given little thought to workers as people rather than as tools. In terms of improving efficiency, Taylor's ideas remain very influential. However, more recent thinking suggests that people's attitudes to work are more complex than Taylor suggested. What do you think? Is money the only reason for wanting to work hard? You might like to try these questions. Question 1. Explain why time and motion studies can reduce unit costs. Question 2. What do you think is meant by a high division of labour? Question 3. What do you see as the advantages and disadvantages of a manu manufacturing process that involves a high division of labour? To find out more, visit learnloads.com.